Hi guys. Well, let's see if the goddamn second time around. I feel like this is deja vu all over again. I swear it was one week ago. One week ago, uh, uh, last Friday, I, I, I started my Ain't Gonna Happen Roundup rant on this new piece of shit computer. I, 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 anyway, I feel like I have been through this movie before, but we're gonna try it again this week. And, 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 and if this goddamn computer uh, eats this, eats all of my tabs across the top of here. If I touch something on this fucking computer and all the fucking tabs disappear again, that ain't gonna happen, Rant. Ain't gonna happen. Okay? It ain't gonna happen. I'm sick and tired of this fucking bullshit. But anyway, assuming the ain't gonna happen rant happens, it is now, what is it, little dog? It is Friday. September 27th, 2024, here in the collapse of everything, namely this goddamn piece of shit new computer I pissed $600 down the fucking toilet to get. And I should have uh, refreshed my... Anyway, uh, it is time for our weekly Ain't Gonna Happen Roundup Rant. I decided we're not even going to visit medium.com. We're just sticking mostly with this various and sundry mainstream medias and alternative medias and whatnot without even going on medium.com for uh, ain't going to happen. But this first, what I wanted to, this is where I was in, 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 in the video a, a, a damn hour ago. Here's what I did. I got the dog, I went like this, I picked up the computer, I went like this, and everything on the computer disappeared. Went completely blank. Every one of my tabs or my windows across the top. But anyway, it seems like the ain't gonna happen rat is actually going to happen. Uh, and as I was saying, when I got so rudely interrupted before, uh, this, this first comment is, is, how would you put this in an ain't gonna happen? This is an ain't gonna happen to people who claim that peak oil ain't gonna happen sometime between now, I guess, sometime between now and 2050, I guess they're pushing it back again. So I did this, this rant, uh, how to be a good little doomer and still be on the fence about peak oil demand. And I had this very long response from this very nice fellow named Barry Carter trying to explain it to me, but I was halfway through his explanation, and I, and, and dude, I appreciate your effort, but I, you know, it's explanations like that, 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 that run people off, but don't worry, Andy the gardener, Andy the gardener uh, is going once again to explain to anyone who believes that peak oil ain't gonna happen, that 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 peak oil not happening ain't going to happen. So thank you, Andy the Gardener, for, for explaining this to anyone on the fence about peak oil. Take it away, Andy. <clears throat> you are both right and wrong. It is true that peak crude oil, but peak crude oil began in 2005 and I don't think the amount of crude oil has expanded since then much at all. I.e., oil peaked. You know what? If oil is what they used to call oil, uh, has peaked and stayed peaked. Just because something peaks does not mean it collapses into a downward spiral immediately, supply has flatlined. The amount of gloop in the ground 
is just too great to expect an overnight contraction. <clears throat> the fracking tar sands and coal to oil stuff that subsequently, you know, this, uh, what do they call this, oil equivalents, uh, the fracking tar sands and coal to oil stuff that subsequently allowed growth in all oil to continue a bit, although nowhere near like in oils, you know, real oils heyday. It's, it's not, you know, all of this other stuff is not technically oil and is really just a manifestation of the bumpy plateau. All that stuff came about precisely because of peak oil and thus by its, by its existence proves peak oil. It is not unreasonable to expect about 20, 30, 40 years of this bumping along at the top of the curve before things go south in an expected way and we can all relax because the things that replaced some oil have their own tra trajectory and will also inevitably peak. The mistake was to expect civilization to collapse as soon as peak oil, you know, peak real oil occurred. It did not, sadly, happen, and peak oil theory was said to be proven wrong, which is just silly as many pundits at the time did actually say there would be a lengthy period as far as we fruit flies are concerned before collapse events will play out in a time scale proportional to what came before the collapse phase manifesting a few decades, 50 years even, which would mean 2055, after oil peaked is exactly what you would expect. But if you are not interested in this fine detail and just consider oil, oil, whatever its origin, then yeah, it is true that civilization is swimming in oil, a depressing situation indeed when one was hoping for some action by now. Alright, thank you uh, Andy the Gardener for explaining that to peak oil fence sitters and I continue to uh, stubbornly say that, uh, th that, that something is going to give and uh, we are going to collapse sometime between 2050, but peak oil is not going to be what, you know, brings down uh, this civilization and the planet along with it. It's not going to be the number one reason peak oil in and of itself is not going to cause the collapse of civilization. It might uh, have, you know, as Andy says, in, in, in 2055, but uh, by the time peak oil, uh, you know, takes down the civilization, there's not going to be anything left to take down. It's already going to be gone. So I'm still saying peak oil ain't going to happen. Peak whatever this gloop uh, is, uh, ain't going to happen. Anyway, enough of that. I think we've beat that subject into the ground. So just going down in no particular order, I love these folks at Avaz. Avaz, and they're looking at a petition. All right, I love it. Right here in the great state of New York, Yes, this is huge. 
New York's governor is close to signing a law that will end the free ride for corporate polluters making big oil pay for decades of planet wrecking pollution. <coughs> Imagine if big oil were forced to pay for polluting the planet. If after decades of free riding, they would be held accountable for floods, droughts, and heat waves impacting all of us. This is not a fantasy. A New York, a, a new law in New York would do exactly that, bringing in billions of dollars from corporate polluters to deal with climate disasters. Yes, but it's on a knife edge as the governor is under enormous pressure from the oil industry. We need a groundswell of public support to make her act. Yes. If passed, it could set a national precedent for a federal bill. Yes, timing is critical. Add your name now. Yes, New York governor, make polluters pay. D, D, D. So what is up with uh, our head uh, doomer? in chief over at the United Nations. I, I can't uh I, I can't have an ain't gonna happen roundup without uh, this guy. UN chief warns of rising tide of misery from swelling seas. Yes. UN Chief Antonio Guterres warned on Wednesday that surging sea levels are creating a rising tide of misery. Yes, as a coalition of small island nations declared that their sovereignty must be respected even if their lands are submerged. Yes, uh, quoting Doomer Tony, rising seas mean a rising tide of misery, said Guterres. Yeah, this was, you know, this thing going on in New York this week. Uh, but what I, what I love about this uh, long article is that there, 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 there's a virtually no hopium uh, in it. Uh, and then the very last paragraph, so they have this, they have this whole article, uh, nowhere denying that, that all of these island nations are, are, are going to go underwater. And in the last sentence, we have Guterres urged countries to commit to new, to ambitious new climate targets to keep global warming within one and a half degrees Celsius. Yes, quote, we cannot leave the hopes and aspirations of billions of people dead in the water. So there you go. We are going to save all of these uh, island nations from going underwater for committing to ambitious new climate targets to keep global warming within one and a half degree from pre-industrial levels. You know, sometimes this is this is from good old Fox News. I don't know if they're playing this up with the ironic, uh, considering the source. Scientists say X-rays from nuclear explosion may deflect asteroids from Earth. Scientists in Albuquerque, New Mexico, say potentially dangerous asteroids could possibly be deflected by exploding 
a nuclear warhead more than a mile from its surface and showering it with x-rays to send it in a different directions. Uh, moving on. All right, we have some climate solutions coming from the great state of Oregon. Climate solutions. Two kinds of ocean energy inch forward off the Oregon coast. Yes. And of course, we're talking about uh, large wave energy. We have large wave energy. You know, the same waves pounding the Oregon coast are... Uh, so the coastal waters of Oregon are shaping up to be key for advances in two forms of renewable energy. We have direct wave power, and don't forget wind turbines that float. Yes. Wave energy is at an earlier stage than floating wind, but the potential could be big. So what is the new scientist? The new scientist, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm hitting a paywall so I can only read uh, the, the headline in about three sentences, but fortunately it's all we need to read to put this in the ain't gonna happen roundup rant. Take it away, new scientist. Plan to refreeze Arctic sea ice shows promise in first test. Field trials indicate that pumping seawater onto the snow on top of Arctic sea ice can make the ice thicker, offering a possible way to preserve sea ice throughout the summer. And uh, here, here we go. I mean, th this is already up and going. Uh, if, if anybody thinks that they're making this up, uh, can you see that picture, that thing that looks like the Loch Ness Monster over on the right is regurgitating seawater on top of snow. It is that they are doing, they are up there right now. A bold plan to pump seawater over the frozen Arctic Ocean could offer humanity a final chance to save the region's vanishing sea ice. Field trials conducted this year in the Canadian Arctic to thicken sea ice using water from the ocean below have proved successful. Yes, says UK startup Real Ice. Okay, th th this is for anybody uh, still clinging to some absolute uh, fucking horseshit notion that there's any such thing as plastic recycling. And I love it. In one story, we have a double ain't gonna happen. Uh, we, we, we have that the, 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 the very idea of plastic recycling ain't gonna happen. And, and, and then we have uh, that the, 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 the fuckers making the plastic aren't gonna stop making, that ain't gonna happen. So they, they're, not gonna, they're, they're not gonna stop making it, that ain't gonna happen. And, and when they do make it, it ain't gonna be recycled. So we have two AGHs 
in one story from the LA Times, California lawsuit accuses ExxonMobil of misleading the public about plastic recycling. Poor Exxon can't catch a break. They're getting they're they're getting this new law in New York and a lawsuit in California. California Attorney General Rob Bonta has filed a first of its kind lawsuit aimed at Exxon Mobil Corporation. Yes, one of the largest producers of petroleum-based plastics for allegedly deceiving the public about the potential for plastic recycling and creating an environmental blight that has cost the state billions of dollars to clean up. The lawsuit filed on Monday accuses ExxonMobil of falsely promoting plastics as universally recyclable when in fact the vast majority of these products can not be reused. Decades of misleading marketing and newspaper advertisements, social media posts, television commercials, and public statements caused consumers to buy and use more single-use plastic than they would have otherwise, uh, he alleged. The lawsuit seeks to compel the oil giant to, quote, end its deceptive practices, close quote, about plastics recycling and ask the court to order ExxonMobil to establish an abatement fund and pay financial p penalties, quote, for the harm inflicted by plastics pollution upon California's communities and the environment, said Bonta, quote, the company has propped up sham solutions, manipulated the public, and lied to consumers. It is time ExxonMobil pays the price for its deceit. It is time ExxonMobil is held accountable. Yes. Okay, you, you know, you, you, I, I knew this headline was coming. You know all about all, all of these solar flares uh, that you're reading about going on all over the place. And I knew it had to be here. Could a powerful solar flare wipe out life on Earth? The answer to the question, could a powerful, powerful solar flare wipe out life on Earth, and I think they're talking in the next couple of weeks, uh, the answer is no. All right. Well, we, you know, this is where uh, Antonio Guterres is hanging out for a week. New York, baby, will be center of money-focused fight to slow climate change. All right. The effort to save the pale blue dot called Earth is all about the green. That is the money to finance a transition to renewable energy sources like wind and solar. All right, the annual Climate Week NYC and United Nations General Assembly combination is putting special emphasis on how to generate trillions, to generate trillions of dollars to help poorer countries move away from gas, oil, and coal that emit greenhouse gases and heat the planet. Yes, they also need financial aid to deal with the damage. The warning is already 
causing. Yes, and there is also a special UN Summit of the Future. There is a UN Summit of the Future going on right down the street from me, which connects climate change and biodiversity to other pressing issues like war and another UN special session on the threat of rising seas, which we've already uh, talked about, and the presidents of climate negotiations, whatever that means, are seeking to push nations into a new round of dramatic pollution cuts with their own efforts. Did you hear uh, Joe Biden uh, welcoming, you know, going up there, that doddering, oh, full, they, they propped him up in front of the lectern in uh, downtown New York City, and the first thing out of his mouth was, welcome to Washington. <laughs> Joe Biden had no clue what city he was in. Uh, a, a couple, no clue what city he was in. All right, but what is the Pope up to? Uh, what is the Pope up to? Pope denounces slaying of Honduran environmental defender. Pope Francis condemned the slaying of an environmental activist in Honduras, adding to a growing number of international voices that has raised concern over the killing. The environmental leader Juan Lopez was gunned down earlier this month in the municipality of Tokoa in rural northern Honduras after spending years combating mining companies to preserve his region's rivers and forests. Said the Pope, I stand with those who see their basic rights trampled and with those who act for the common good in response to the cries from the poor of the earth. Yes, the rural Caribbean region of Cologne has seen a wave of slayings of environmental of environmentalists in recent years, and three activists from Lopez's organization were killed just last year. The religious leader joined a number of global leaders to condemn the killing. Yes, last week, Brian Nichols, Assistant U.S. Secretary of State for the Western Hemisphere demanded justice for Lopez. The United Nations called for, quote, competent authorities. There you go. The UN called for competent authorities to carry out an immediate, exhaustive, and impartial investigation to identify and punish those people responsible, both material and intellectual, for this murder, close quote. And Honduran President Jamora Castro called Lopez's death, quote, a vile murder and promised to meet mounting demands to investigate his slaying. Yes, but we are going to give the uh, the corporate greenwashing, uh, bright green lie bullshit uh, uh, of the uh, week award to some outfit calling itself the Daily Meal right here is one of a Yahoo News story. Here is what type of fish is in your McDonald's filet of fish sandwich. You don't even have to be a particular fan of a fish sandwich to love McDonald's filet of fish. There's just something delectable about that crispy piece of flaky white fish, the cheese, and the bun. That is brilliant in its simplicity. 
Have you ever wondered what kind of fish it is? If so, you're not alone. And we have some seriously good news for you. Not only does McDonald's pride itself on sourcing sustainable fish, but this particular type of fish they use is one of Alaska's most plentiful when it comes to food, at least. The McDonald's filet of fish is probably fresher than you might expect too. Yes, it wasn't too long before you bit into your piping hot fish sandwich that the fish inside was frolicking in the waters around Alaska and the Bering Sea. Yes, that is because the filet of fish is made with Alaska pollock. Yes, the fish destined for your McD's sandwich are wild caught as opposed to being farm raised and the strict regulation that govern the Alaskan fishing industry have made it this not only one of the most sustainable fish, but a fish population that is not susceptible to overfishing and one that leads to almost no bycatch using Alaska Pollock allows McDonald's to be sustainable on a massive scale. Using Alaska Pollock allows McDonald's to be sustainable on a massive scale. And I think they're predicting they're going to sell three, that, that one fast food joint is going to sell 315 million, 315 million uh, fish sandwiches. This is this is one uh, fast food joint uh, is looking to sell pretty much one million of these every day for the next year. And Yahoo News, just printing this unadulterated fucking horseshit. There is no such thing as a massively sustainable 315 million fish sandwiches at McDonald's. It, 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 the, the, the very no, the notion of it that, that if you think uh, that you're eating a sustainable wild caught fish at McDonald's. You're a clueless fucking moron. It ain't gonna happen. But anyway, all of this talk about McDonald's filet of fish, and I love those fuckers. I used to, good God, I used to be able to wolf down four of those. I would order four filet of, I can still taste it. Oh my God, just biting into that. I am, but I am so glad to learn that uh, that I can eat, that I can go back to eating McDonald's filet of fish sandwiches. Maybe I'll do a video in the next few days about me eating a a massively sustainable fish while I still can. But I'm going to have to go eat a massively sustainable uh, factory farmed pig while I wait for my massively sustainable fish sandwich. Get out there and eat your own massively sustainable fellow earthling while you still can. Bye guys.